Hello everyone, welcome back to Storytime and today I'm going to read the first part of chapter 8 from Alice in Wonderland. This chapter is called The Queen's Croquet Ground. Croquet is a game that you play with something called a mallet that's made of wood which is like a big stick with something that looks a bit like a hammer at the bottom but it's probably as tall as up to your waist and then you play with a ball also made of wood and painted in different colours and you have to knock the ball with the mallet through little arches that are stuck into the ground and you have to go along from the start to the finish and move your ball with your mallet all the way through to the end. That's what croquet is and this is the Queen's Croquet Ground. A large rose tree stood near the entrance of the garden. The roses growing on it were white, but there were three gardeners at it, busily painting them red. Alice thought this a very curious thing, and she went nearer to watch them, and just as she came up to them she heard one of them say, Look out now, Five! Don't go splashing paint over me like that! I couldn't help it, said Five in a sulky tone. Seven jogged my elbow! on which Seven looked up and said, That's right, Five, always lay the blame on others. You'd better not talk, said Five. I heard the Queen say only yesterday you deserve to be beheaded. Now, that's a really tricky bit of text to understand. And it's because the three gardeners look like playing cards. <coughs> if you look at the picture, you've got one playing card that's got a number seven on it, one a number two and one a number five. So they're called two, five and seven. And they're all from a pack of cards and they're from the spades. That little black mark is called a spade and they're calling each other two, five and seven. And one of them's supposed to be being beheaded, which means having his head chopped off. What for? said the one who had spoken first. That's none of your business too, said Seven. Yes, it is his business, said Five, and I'll tell him. It was for bringing the cook tulip roots instead of onions. Seven flung down his brush and had just begun. Well, of all the unjust things, when his eye chanced to fall upon Alice as she stood watching them, and he checked himself suddenly. The others looked around also, and all of them bowed low. Would you tell me, said Alice a little timidly, why you are painting those roses? Five and seven said nothing, but looked at two. Two began in a low voice. Why, the fact is, you see, miss, this year ought to have been a red rose tree and we put a white one in by mistake and if the Queen was to find it out we should all have our heads cut off you know so you see miss we're doing our best before she comes to at this moment five who had been anxiously looking across the garden called out the Queen the Queen and the three gardeners instantly threw themselves flat upon their faces. There was a sound of many footsteps and Alice looked around, eager to see the Queen. First came ten soldiers carrying clubs. These were all shaped like the three gardeners, oblong and flat, with their hands and feet at the corners. Next the ten courtiers. These were ornamented all over with diamonds. Ornamented means decorated and they walked two and two as the soldiers did. After these came the royal children. There were ten of them, and the little deers came jumping merrily along hand in hand in couples. They were all ornamented with hearts. Next came the guests, mostly kings and queens, and among them Alice recognised the white rabbit. It was talking in a hurried, nervous manner, smiling at everything that was said, and went by without noticing her. Then followed the knave of hearts, carrying the king's crown on a crimson velvet cushion. 
and last of all this grand procession came the King and Queen of Hearts. Alice was rather doubtful whether she ought not to lie down on her face like the three gardeners, but she could not remember ever having heard of such a rule at processions. And besides, what would be the use of a procession, thought she, if people had all to lie down upon their faces so that they couldn't see it? So she stood still where she was and waited. When the procession came opposite to Alice, they all stopped and looked at her, and the Queen said severely, Who is this? She said to the Knave of Hearts, who only bowed and smiled in reply, Idiot! said the Queen, tossing her head impatiently, and turning to Alice, she went on, What's your name, child? My name is Alice, so please your Majesty, said Alice very politely. But she added to herself, Why, they're only a pack of cards, after all. I needn't be afraid of them. And this illustration shows the Queen of Hearts pointing at Alice and obviously asking the question, who is this? <coughs> and who are these? said the Queen, pointing to the three gardeners who were lying round the rose tree. For you see, as they were lying on their faces, and the pattern on their backs was the same as the rest of the pack, she could not tell whether they were gardeners or soldiers or courtiers or three of her own children. How should I know? said Alice, surprised at her own courage. It's no business of mine. The Queen turned crimson with fury. Crimson is like a reddy colour. And after glaring at her for a moment like a wild beast, screamed, Off with her head! Off! Nonsense! said Alice very loudly and decidedly, and the Queen was silent. The King laid his hand upon the Queen's arm and timidly said, Consider, my dear, she is only a child. The Queen turned angrily away from him and said to the Knave, Turn them over! The Knave did so very carefully with one foot. Get up! said the Queen in a shrill loud voice and the three gardeners instantly jumped up and began bowing to the King and Queen, the royal children and everybody else. Leave off that! screamed the Queen. You make me giddy! And then turning to the rose tree she went on, What have you been doing here? May it please your majesty, said Two, in a very humble tone, going down on one knee as he spoke. We were trying. I see, said the queen, who had meanwhile been examining the roses. Off with their heads! And the procession moved on. Three of the soldiers remaining behind to execute. That means to chop off the head the unfortunate gardeners who ran to Alice for protection. You shan't be beheaded, said Alice, and she put them into a large flower pot that stood nearby. The three soldiers wandered about for a minute or two, looking for them, and then quietly marched off after the others. Are their heads off? shouted the Queen. Their heads are gone, Your Majesty, if you please, the soldiers shouted in reply. That's right, shouted the Queen. Can you play croquet? The soldiers were silent and looked at Alice as the question was evidently meant for her. Yes, shouted Alice. Come on then, roared the Queen. And Alice joined the procession, wondering very much what would happen next. And that's where we're going to leave it for this time. And I will now go on to read the next part of chapter eight where we find out all about the Queen's croquet game. So bye bye for now. See you again soon.